Hi, good morning. Everybody get in nice and tight. Uh, good morning, I'm Doug Neville from the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Thank you all for, for coming today. Um, and I wanna welcome all those that are watching online. Um, we're gonna have four speakers this morning. It's gonna start with Bruce West, uh, the Minnesota State Fire Marshal, followed by Scott Holst from the Wabasha Fire Department. He's a training and safety officer. Then Dan Buckholz from St. Cloud Technical College. And then finally Marv Kelvin, uh, he's the fire liaison with the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. We're gonna ask that you let each person uh, make their statement and then we'll open it up for questions um, after Marv finishes. So with that, Mr. West. Good morning everyone, uh, Bruce West State Fire Marshal. And thanks for being here today and also streaming this online uh, live. Over my shoulder, where we are today, first of all, is we're at the in Maplewood, Oakdale area. We're at the East Metro Public Safety Training Facility, which just yesterday actually had their ribbon cutting, uh, which was a great event. Uh, basically, open house that they had here yesterday opening this facility. The facility is a great training area for public safety uh, across the state uh, if they want to come in, but mainly in the East Metro. But over my shoulder is the training trailer that the State Fire Marshal Division, we have three of these training trailers that are strategically located around the state, one in St. Cloud, one in Mankato, and one in Detroit Lakes. And what they're for, it's a training aid that the fire departments can use, and you'll hear more about that today from a training officer perspective from Scott Holtz. Dan Buckholz will talk about it from the fire training manager perspective. Uh, as he is the, uh, the leader of the fire training program at St. Cloud. But what it's for, it's for fire departments across the state from the metro to greater Minnesota where they can use this as a tool to sharpen their skills, uh, the newer firefighters to get their skills, uh, learn those skills on vertical ventilation. For one, as you can see the trailer right now is, is in an, a uh, 10-12 type pitch, I believe, at this time, but it can go from a 412 up to a 612, 512, whatever you want to use. It's going to get that firefighter an opportunity to work from a roof ladder, work from the roof, um, to, to get their skills sharpened for vertical ventilation if needed in a structure fire for the protection of the firefighters inside and also for escaping those hot gases to enhance the possibility of during a search and rescue uh, for the safety of the people who might be inside. Another uh, tool that's used is the forcible entry. <clears throat> Using that, uh, getting the skills for forcible entry into a commercial type building. Uh, commercial buildings have doors that open out and so to, to learn that scenario of opening up a commercial building door, a residential door that opens in is fairly easy to force open for a firefighter but very difficult in a commercial setting when the door is going to open out. So another skill that the firefighters can can learn and train um, with this with this operation. How it works with the with the training trailers, a fire department's going to contact one of the local training providers, again whether it's St. Cloud, Mankato, or Detroit Lakes, and then uh, the Minsku institution there will contract with that local department. The trailer will come to that department, maybe on their regular drill night on a Monday night. Maybe they come out at six o'clock and work from six to nine. The department will have the opportunity to have a drill night operation with this trailer. It comes to them with all the consumables, and what I mean by that is the, the plywood that's on the roof and, and it's just ready for them to go. So at this time, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll bring up Scott Holtz. Thank you, Bruce. My name's Scott Holtz, the training and safety officer for the Wabasho Fire Department. I had the opportunity to bring this uh, fire vent trailer to my facility, to my fire department, and set up a two night training to where I had the opportunity to bring my firefighters in um, at the convenience of their time frame, their time constraints to come down and train. We were able to do uh, vertical ventilation on a 12-12 pitch, which is very steep. It's hard for firefighters to work on that. Perfect opportunity to, for that. As you can see, it can actually be taken all the way down to a 4-12, I believe. Um, some of the other things we had the opportunity to do was 
forcible entry in the back, outward, inward swinging doors. And we also set up a chimney prop, which is a common call in my jurisdiction this time of year. Um, it's, it's hard to train on a scenario like that without an acquired structure. This trailer is a wonderful opportunity to do that and really aids the public in being able to bring that type of training to its firefighters in their community. Very grateful to have this opportunity to work with this trailer on my department and look forward to using it again this year. Thank you. My name is Dan Buckholtz. I'm the Fire and EMS Training uh, Program Director from St. Cloud Technical and Community College. So as a training provider, what this trailer has provided for us is it's given us um, an opportunity to meet some of the needs of the departments that we work with. Whenever I go out and talk with uh, training officers and fire chiefs at different departments, when I ask them about training and what they want, they always want hands-on training. This uh, prop, training prop gives them that opportunity to get hands-on training and a lot of different skills that, as Scott alluded to, if, if you don't get an acquired structure to be able to uh, do some of these drills, you're not necessarily going to get the opportunity to do them. So getting up on a roof and actually cutting a hole in a roof, uh, using forcible entry equipment on the doors to be able to pry those open. Um, we've also looked at how else we can use the trailer besides those uh, few opportunities that we have and it's allowed us as program directors to be able to come up with some ideas as far as doing uh, different rescue drills for firefighters especially when other firefighters go down and how we are going to move those firefighters around and how we can use this prop to facilitate that. Um, let's see what else do I got. I think that's all I have for now so I'll turn it back over to Mark. Thank you. My name is Marv Calvin. I'm the fire liaison for the Minnesota State training agencies that provide fire training within the state of Minnesota. And first off, I'd like to thank a few people that were very instrumental in making this happen. This is a joint project between the Fire Act grant, which is funded out of federal dollars, along with the state fire marshal and the folks at Minsku. At that time, we were uh, Minsku fire training, and now we're Minnesota State. But uh, Bruce Road was a uh, a gentleman that was very instrumental in writing the grant and putting the grant together. Uh, it took a, a collaborative effort not only between the State Fire Marshal's office but also with uh, the Minsk uh, system to make this happen. So our agency provided the 10 percent grant match for the project and of course we want to uh, thank our senators Klobuchar and Franken for the work that they've done on this along with uh, Commissioner uh, Dolman for the work and support that she provided to this as well. Also Fire Marshal West for his support and encouragement as we've worked through this project. But again, this would not have happened without the uh, hard work of uh, Bruce Road and the work that he did. We put this together. Again, we have three of these strategically located throughout the state. One in St. Cloud, one in Mankato, and one in Detroit Lakes. So at this time we'll show you how this actually works and how our firefighters are actually trained and uh, at the end of the day this is going to save lives not only of citizens but also of firefighters of learning how to do these tasks safely and so with it with this I'll turn it over to Kevin yep I'm sorry Kevin. Well, yep before uh, we turn it over to Kevin Sedevi Kevin Sedevi from the State Fire Marshal Division is one of our fire service specialists uh, we will take some questions but I will echo what Marv said uh, Marv Calvin from Minsku uh, Bruce Road is a retired fire service specialist from our division. Uh, Bruce came to me and came to our chief deputy with this idea of getting the three training trailers. We kicked it around for a while and it didn't take uh, too long before we were telling Bruce, you know, go for it, give it a go. And, and one of the things we had to make sure we could cover was the match. And when we approached uh, Minsku, now Minnesota State, uh, with the match, um, they hopped right on board with the partnership and we you know really appreciate that so thanks to everybody involved but I'll be happy to take any questions uh, cost great question there was three of them uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the three of them uh, not a piece for all three and then with the match involved uh, but all of that uh, was through the assistance of firefighter grant program and as a state entity, the Minnesota State Fire Marshal Division is the point of contact as the state training agency for Minnesota. And so we were the ones that received that grant as the point of contact for uh, statewide training. All right, I'll turn it over to Kevin Sedevi from the State Fire Marshal Division, and he's going to talk you through the demonstration that you'll see on the trailers. Kevin? 
Thank you. Um, we're going to first start off with uh, Maplewood Fire setting up their aerial device and uh, pretending like they're fighting a chimney fire. And then from there, we're going to move over and they're going to uh, do uh, verti or vertical ventilation and um, horizontal ventilation and get that done. And then we'll move around to the back of the trailer and we'll do some forcible entry and we'll get their cutoff saw going and we'll cut some, uh, some hinges off the back of the trailer also. So I'll narrate that as we go through. Um, we can get started. Straight shot at the In this scenario, Maplewood Fire will use their aerial device that gain access to the chimney. Not all times uh, can we get to that point uh, because of how far away the house might be from the street or trees might be in the way or power lines and that sort of thing. So um, they'll go up the ladder, take a chain, drop it down through the chimney and try to clean it out like a, uh, if the chimney had a fire in it. Uh, predominantly, we see this a lot out in the rural area, especially now with the uh, heating season uh, coming in front of us. So what he'll do is actually drop that uh, chain down through the chimney, try to knock down the, uh, the creosote that's burning inside the chimney down into the, uh, the uh, fireplace area so they can get cleaned out. If they couldn't get their aerial device to there, they would access it by the ladders and a roof ladder that they have set up beside it. It's a good application like uh, training officer uh, 
Hole said that a lot of times we can't practice this uh, without getting an acquired structure, and sometimes that's not possible. Some fire departments will uh, deploy water, use water down the chimney. Um, each department's trained kind of on their own protocols and have their own SOPs, SOGs to uh, decide how to fight the fire. The prop now is at a 12-12 pitch. Um, to show how easy it is to change the pitch on this, we're going to go ahead and drop it now to a 6-12 pitch before we go up and do the ventilation. Simple as pulling a couple of pins in the back of the trailer. There you have it, they dropped it down actually do an 8-12 pitch. Um, could move that attic uh, portion of it up into the 8-12 pitch would be up a couple of slots, but for the ease of this uh, demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and do the ventilation.
firefighters now will access the roof, get up under their uh, roof ladder, which is their safety, um, in case the roof collapses below them. He's sounding the roof to see how good it is. Stepping up onto the roof ladder. That provides them with real good safety while they're up on the roof in case something happens below them and some part of the roof falls in. Makes one cut up at the top, one down on the outside. Finishes up the cut coming down on the inside by the ladder. Now he'll uh, take it. And he'll reach down inside with his pike pole to knock out the uh, attic space if there's anything up there. Get down into the home. I could go ahead and do those evolutions, cut uh, all the way across the top of that roof, really with about four or five, maybe six pieces of uh, plywood they could do uh, a half a dozen to maybe ten evolutions. Again, they can rotate out with firefighters. Um, gives all gives all the firefighters on the uh, training ground that night uh, something to do. It takes quite a few firefighters to do an evolution like this. Then at the same time, we could have firefighters in the back of the trailer using a forcible entry prop, which we will uh, demonstrate here in a minute. In the back, the uh, forcible entry again, like uh, they were talking about earlier, we got outward swinging doors, inward swinging doors. Uh, we've got it where they uh, can take their cutoff saw and cut uh, simulated hinges um, and uh, even bolts off of the back of the uh, trailer. Going back to the ventilation part of it, uh, some of the trainers uh, we get with more seasoned firefighters will actually felt up that roof and even put asphalt shingles on it to make it a little bit tougher for them to uh, go through there. Uh, the trailer prop uh, has uh, lights that will go in the four corners, remove the four posts in the corners and there's uh, LED lights. Uh, the lights light up underneath the trailer, light, uh, light up on those posts so I can use this in you know, nighttime operations uh, come in fall and winter here where the daylight uh, uh, goes down about 4.30. These guys get the training at 6 o'clock. It's dark out so they can actually do this in the, uh, in the evening and it's just good nighttime training for them. The prop is pretty much uh, self-contained, uh, uh, has batteries inside, does, uh, as of right now there's no power connected to it. Everything that we're doing is running off a couple of batteries. Uh, that'll, that'll last a, a good four to eight hour training session with the lights on. The 
uh, vent trailer does have a generator that can run along with it, so if we don't have 120 volts uh, close to it, we can run it off a generator and that'll easily power it for uh, what we need. Hey, Maplewood firefighters are going to come around to the back now and uh, start on the ventilation uh, or the uh, forcible entry. Um, I think the first thing they'll probably do is have the outward swinging door and get that open and then do the inward swinging door and then go ahead and go over and uh, cut the hinges off and the uh, bolts off. different skills and techniques to uh, force these doors um, up to the fire departments, SOPs and SOGs again on how they do it um, and other some uh, training providers have different ways of uh, forcing the door um, but it's all the same purpose is to, uh, to get that door forced open uh, to gain entry into a building. Outward doors are harder to bring open um, as you see, when they get to the inward door, it'll be a little easier for them to get that door open. We can put different lengths and the thicknesses of wood inside those doors to make that door harder. So maybe with a, uh, uh, a rookie firefighter, we're going to make it a little bit easier for them. And if we get to the seasoned firefighters, we can make it a little bit more difficult by putting a little thicker chunk of wood in there for them. Also, the uh, there's springs on the outside of the hinges, so to move that door out, um, it, uh, we can put more pressure on there again, so if we get some seasoned firefighters, we can make it more difficult for them to, to complete the task. They force the out door, outward swinging door. Now they're getting to the inward swinging door. There's parts of these doors that can be replaced um, uh, per fairly easily. So the uh, doors itself and the frame was pretty much there for the life of the trailer, but there's, uh, there's parts that we can replace that uh, if they get worn, like when they get over to the area where they're gonna cut the hinges off. The door handle and the, uh, the uh, bolt lock itself, deadbolt lock, um, it can be replaceable. They put their uh, put their axes on there and they just knock them right off like they would going into a building and we just uh, get the locksmiths, get a bunch of uh, locks and, and uh, dead bolts to uh, replace them so they can actually knock them off. Again, it's a pretty versatile uh, training tool. Um, uh, we really encourage fire departments to bring it in and, and, and invite their uh, mutual aid departments to come in and work together and uh, spend some time at this, maybe not even one evening, but maybe for an entire week or for us all day Saturday training session. Now they're gonna Use the cutoff saw, cut the bolts off, cut the hinges off. Just good practice use with the saw. Um, a lot of fire departments don't get to you uh, utilize this type of saw very often, so 
just good training for when they have to use it. This training prop also can hang some garage doors off the back side. Um, they could use that same saw they have there to cut through the garage doors um, if they want to get a little bit more in depth with that. Demonstrate cutting the uh, bolts off of a uh, off of a door. Now the bolts are on the outside of that door. He can cut it down the middle like that, and then he'll come and he'll just chop that off, and then he'll just knock that bolt right on through. Firefighters, even seasoned firefighters, will find it difficult holding that saw up at that kind of angle um, with that kind of. So uh, it's a good training session to uh, get them to get used to using that. Now he's knocking the bolt through. And again, this is something we can do over and over and over again. Each firefighter can get a chance to go ahead and uh, use that saw and practice that skill. The better off they are at this, um, better off they're going to be gaining access into a building at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now they'll take the cutoffs on. Go ahead and cut those hinges. What we do is put a piece of angle iron in there, quarter inch thick, uh, just to simulate the hinge. As you can probably see as he's cutting, it's a lot harder to cut that one up that's about three foot higher than the one he's at now, especially with that force of the saw. And a fine job you're doing. Some other things that we're going to add into this, and Dan talked about it from SCTC a little bit, uh, add a bailout wall up on top so that the, the uh, platform would be flat, about eight feet off the ground, so the firefighters can uh, simulate bailing out a window if they get into the, uh, in the situation where they need to do that or help uh, a, a citizen out a window or something like that. And then also a set of steps like he talked about to where we can uh, simulate a firefighter fell through the floor into a basement or we had uh, a civilian in the basement or we had a civilian upstairs where we could either move them up or down the steps or even just through a hole in the floor down to the lower level to, to raise them out if we had to do that. Pretty versatile uh, training prop. Uh, they said earlier, stationed in Mankato, St. Cloud, Detroit Lakes, hopefully within 100 miles of a fire department uh, to get out to them and again to, uh, to get these things out and get them used, um, not only for the uh, new firefighters in the uh, 1001 training classes that we have going on around the state, but uh, for the seasoned firefighters as well. We're, we're pretty much done.
This is Bruce West, State Fire Marshal. I'd like to thank everyone for who was viewing this online. This concludes the online version of today's event. Thank you very much for watching this. We really appreciate it.